Listen, I want you to grab your Bibles and open, if you will, to 1 Samuel chapter 28. 1 Samuel chapter 28. That is in the Old Testament, about the ninth book in to the Old Testament. 1 Samuel chapter 28. I want to continue a series that I began a few weeks ago that I've entitled Living a Lie. And I want you to stop and think about your life or someone you know and how easy it is to go through life and we begin to live a lie. And you say, Brother Ron, what is living a lie? Living a lie is when we don't live up to the potential that we have in God. When we don't live up to the plan that he has for us. When we don't live up to the purpose he wants to fulfill in our life. When we don't live up to the power that he wants to demonstrate in and through us. When you and I go through life and these things are not present, they're not working through us, then in reality we can say we're beginning to live a lie. Now we're looking at David. Most of you know David in the Bible. The Bible describes him as a man after God's own heart. But in chapter 27, 28, and 29 of 1 Samuel, he's beginning to live a lie. He does this for about 16 months. We asked in the very first message why he began to live a lie. How could a man after God's own heart begin to live a lie, live under all that God has for him? First of all, remember the first message? He was confused. He was confused because he was running from King Saul, the first king of Israel. He was running and King Saul was trying to find him and kill him and destroy him, and he was confused. Where was God? He was confused. He was supposed to be the king that ascended to the throne. But he wasn't at this time. So he became confused. And instead of sticking with God, what did he do? He turned around and went to the arch enemies of Israel, which is the Philistines. He became confused. And because he was confused, he began to live a lie. We said many times in our own lives, we do the same thing. We live a lie because we're confused. We're confused on life's problems. Why are we going through so many problems? And God's timing. Where's God at? Doesn't he know I'm going through all these problems? I'm shuffling all these plates, juggling all these balls? How come God doesn't intervene? And then we're confused about the enemy's agenda, this spiritual warfare thing that we hear preachers talk about. What is that? And so David began to live a lie because he was confused. And so many times we do the same thing. But then the second message, we entitled it Cover Up. Because here's what happens. If you live a lie long enough, and you stay confused long enough, and you fail to go to God and say, God, what's going on? Why am I confused? I come to you to help me. If you continue in that state, the second phase is a cover up. Now David had to begin to cover his tracks. He was living in what we said was denial. King Achish, who he was under, the Philistine king who he was under, who he met with, told him to go out and to raid the Israelites' towns and villages. David wasn't doing that. Rather, he was going to the Philistines' towns and villages, raiding them, and this is what he did. He killed every man, every woman, and probably the children so they wouldn't tell off on him. He had to cover his tracks. He was living in denial. So he started to have to lie. He used deceit. He was lying to everybody around him. And to the point, we said, he became distorted. You can no longer recognize David as a man after God's own heart. That's how distorted his image was before God and before man. Now tonight, I want to, or this morning, I want to talk to you about the third thing in this series of living a lie. Not only does it start with confusion and then goes to cover up, but the third thing that will begin to happen is compromise. 
compromise. 1 Samuel chapter 28. Look, if you will, in verse 1. Now it happened in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for war to fight with Israel. And Achish said to David, You surely know that you will go out with me to battle you and your men. Verse 2. So David said to Achish, Surely you know that or what your servant, circle the word servant. Now David is calling himself a servant of Achish, a servant of the Philistines. Can you imagine? Can do. And Achish said to David, Therefore I will make you one of my chief guardians or top officials in the Philistine army. If you and I do something long enough and we know it's wrong or maybe it's a gray area and we're not sure of, do it long enough, there'll come a point that you'll look back and you will find that you've compromised on so many different levels. It could be you're here this morning and you know what you're doing, the lifestyle that you're living, God wouldn't approve of. Your parents, your grandparents wouldn't approve of. Those around you wouldn't approve of. But you persist in it. You're making decisions that are not right for you, that you know are wrong. You know they're not the best for you. And you continue to make them. You continue to go down the roads that you know have ditches on either side and you're about ready to land on a ditch on either side. And you keep on doing that long enough. You keep on doing what you know is wrong. You keep on doing and indulging in those gray areas of life. It won't be long until you compromise so many things and you'll look in the mirror one day and not even realize the image is looking back at you. David, he began to compromise. He began to compromise his perspectives. He used to see everything through the lens of God. He used to see everything through the lens of the Word of God. Now what's happened to David? He's become negative. Everything's seen through the lens of negativity. He's compromised his values, what he used to believe in, what used to be solid rock in his life. Now he's compromising them. He's compromising his relationships, both on a human and a spiritual level. At this point in David's life, he's living a lie. And he looks around in these 16 months, and honestly, he can't believe what he's become. This morning, I want to give you three things as we think about compromise and what that looks like when we're living a lie. When you and I disregard what we know is right, when we start hanging around people that we shouldn't hang around, we start going to places we shouldn't go, when we start laying out of church, it's just one Sunday. Before long, it's two Sundays, and so on. We start putting our Bibles to the side. We no longer have a personal, intimate time with God. We just don't have time. Do you see the progression? Compromise is the next thing that will characterize our life. So let me give you three things that compromise looks like when you're living a lie. First of all, you become blinded. How many of you have seen those Febreze commercials? Anybody seen those Febreze commercials? Anybody? Come on. They came up with a term I thought was genius. You remember their term? You become nose blind. Remember that? I like the commercials. A, a mom goes in her teenage son's room at the house. Dirty socks everywhere, gym shorts everywhere, T-shirts everywhere, underwear everywhere, and she about gasped. 
But the teenager's fine because why? <laughs> he can't smell it. He's become nose blind. Or I like the one about the man in the man cave. You seen that one? He's down in his man cave. His pit bull is on the couch, wallowing on the couch. Imagine what that couch smelt like. And he's eating a big hamburger with onions and everything on it. What's happened to him? He's become nose blind. You see, what happens to us when we live a lie? We begin to compromise. We become nose blind to who we are, to what we're doing, and the life that we're living. Take, for example, King Saul, the first king of Israel. He become blinded. He compromised. He was living a lie. The first thing we see about Saul is that Samuel the prophet told him to go to Gilgal, to stay there and wait for him, and they would offer a sacrifice together. Do you remember the story? Saul decided not to wait. Samuel hadn't come when he was supposed to come, so he takes matters into his own hands. A king offering the sacrifice, which was a no-no. Only the priest could do that. And what did he do? He blamed it on the people. He was blinded towards David. David was a soldier. David was his servant. David was everything to him. But he began to compromise, live a lie. And now the next thing you know, he's chasing David around the country trying to kill him. And because Saul compromised, he lost his life. But not only that, his son Jonathan also died because of compromise. You say, Brother Ron, I'd never compromise. Ask Lot that in the Bible. Do you remember a man named Lot, the nephew of Abraham? In chapter 13 of the book of Genesis, they have to split ways because they have so many herds and cattle and flocks. The land wouldn't withhold them both. So the Bible says this, that Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom and Gomorrah. A very wicked place. He started to go there. He started to hang around the wrong people, go to the wrong places. And everything about this man was compromised to the point he lost his wife. Do you remember what happened to her? She turned around and became what? A pillar of salt. But also what happened to his two daughters. He actually slept with his two daughters. And that relationship a few years before that, if you'd asked Lot, Lot, would you ever compromise? Lot would have probably said no. All of us, given the wrong circumstances, following the wrong people, going to the wrong places, getting away from God, letting the things of God slip before us, it won't be long before we have to compromise everything in our life. We become blinded to what, Brother Ron? We become blinded to what's happening to us. Look up at your pastor. We become blinded to what's happening to us. Everybody else can see it. But we can't see it. Your mom and dad see it. Your grandparents see it. Your best friends see it. Other people you grew up with see it. But when you're living a lie and you're beginning to compromise, everybody can see it, but you can't see it. You're on this or in this downward spiral. It's taking you down and down and down, but you don't think anything's wrong with it. And everybody there is trying to help you and pull out an arm and a hand, but you won't take it because you're okay. How many wives do I talk to their husbands are in a downward spiral? They're drinking way too much alcohol. They think they can handle it. It's spiraling out of control in their life. And they say, I'm okay. It's going to be fine. And you don't understand. It's destroying your marriage. It's destroying your family. 
It's okay to get on the computer and look at things that are wrong. All men do it, no big deal, and you don't realize you're circling the drain. That intimacy with your wife is going down. You don't know your children anymore. I'm telling you, this can happen to all of us in this room. Take heed, the Bible says, you that think you stand, at least you fall. So you become blinded to what's happening around you. Everybody can see it, but you can't. You become blinded to the people who care about you, to the people that love you the most. You become blinded to them. And anybody that tries to tell you, hey, look, I love you. But look what's happening to you. You shrug it off. You can handle it, no big deal. And you continue to go on. And you're blinded to the people that love you so much, that don't want you to destroy your life. But you're also blinded to the real problem. You know what that is? It's a spiritual problem. I believe everything in life is a spiritual connotation to it. Everything. One day when we stand before God, we thought that was circumstance or coincidence or whatever it might be. It was not. It was spiritual, especially for children of God. Everything that happens to your life, you can trace it back to something spiritual. We become blind. We want to say, well, this circumstance caused me to do this. This person caused me to do it. This is the situation that caused me to go away from God or relapse on God, whatever it is. No, no, no. It is a spiritual problem. And all spiritual problems begin with us. In my own life, every time there's been a spiritual problem or any problem, I can always trace it back to me. I can always trace it back to my relationship with God. So this morning, we're talking about compromise. What it looks like when you're living a lie. First of all, you become blinded. But second of all, you become hardened. Now, I'm about to tell you something I'm not, believe, I'm, I'm not even believing myself I'm going to tell you. I have this love-hate relationship with my hair. I knew you would laugh. Now that I'm losing it, trying to keep it, it's thin, it won't comb, it won't stand up, it's flat. So some years ago, I got turned on to pomades, men's pomades. Anybody ever heard of that? No, you're not going to raise your hand. I know you're not. Okay. I'll be honest today. In my dad's day, it was Brill Cream. That's all they had. Today we have pomades, and all these pomades put on men's hair, they have a certain hold level and a certain uh, shine level. You can have little hold, little shine, medium hold, medium shine, high hold, high shine. So it takes a while to play around with this stuff. And I remember one day, I said, Debbie, I'm going to try some of this high hold stuff. Surely it's going it's to do something. Okay? And she looked at me with one of those looks that only a wife can give you, like, hmm. <laughs> so I got this stuff. So I scooped me some out. You got you to put it in your hands like this. And I went to work. Listen, this stuff hardened so quick. <laughs> I got my brush. And I went like this. And Debbie sitting over at the side just laughing her head off. Listen, when we compromise, when we're living a lie, we can become hardened. 
in my ministry, I've seen people that have become hardened. They know better. They honestly know better. But they persist. And they become hardened. And what they're doing, though they know it's not right, at least it's a gray area and they need to back off. But they continue to do it. They become hardened. They become set in their ways. And the longer they do that, the harder they get until there will come a day it's not whether you want to change or not. You can't. You've done it so long. And it's very difficult for you to turn around. Am I talking to anybody today? Am I describing your life? Have you begun to compromise on so many different levels? Blinded to so many different things? Hardened to so many different things? Listen. God sees it. And he loves you. He's asking you today, would you take a good look at yourself? Not just a quick glance, but a good look at yourself. To see what you're becoming or what you've become. You become hardened, and your ears have become hardened that you're dull of hearing. Look at Hebrews chapter 5. Look at verse 11. In whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. Is, can you come to church now and listen to the preacher preach and it doesn't bother you anymore? Have you got to that point that you can hear a preacher preach, you can hear the Word of God being read, you can hear the Word of God being taught and preached, and it doesn't bother you anymore. You can walk out of these doors and still go back to the same lifestyle that you've been in. It doesn't bother you anymore. You become dull of hearing. You can't hear spiritual things anymore. Are you that hardened? Are you going in that direction? Or your conscience has been hardened that you can't reason properly anymore. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. Look at verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience, watch, seared with a hot iron. It doesn't bother you anymore. Do you remember when you first came to Christ? Anytime you got out of line, it bothered you. But over the years, you become hardened. You become blind. Your own choosing. And now, nothing twinges in here. You can do anything. You can watch anything. You can go anywhere. You can be around whoever. And nothing inside goes off. No alarms go off. No singles go off. There's no twinge anymore. Your conscience has become hardened. Your ears have become hardened. And then your heart has become hardened that you can't feel anymore. Look at Mark chapter 8, verse 17. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason? Because you have no bread. Do you not perceive or nor understand? Now watch. Is your heart still hardened? You can't feel deep down inside like you used to. You can't feel God anymore. You can't feel his touch on your life. 
you can't hear his voice. Your hearts become hardened. This morning, I believe David will look back at this time of his life, these 16 months or so. He would have regretted it. But he also would be grateful and thankful that he turned around because he eventually does. I'm telling you, you can turn around today. Compromise. What's it look like when you're living a lie? First of all, you become blinded. Second of all, you become hardened. Lastly, hear me on this, just a few more minutes. You become exposed. And you say, Brother Ron, what are you talking about? When you persist in this lifestyle, you persist in this way, you expose yourself to some very unhealthy things. Let me mention a couple. First of all, you expose yourself to time. You say, what do you mean? The longer you keep doing that, when the months go by, the years go by, the harder it's going to be to turn around. Time is not your friend, it's your enemy. See, I've known, I think of one young man. He was in his 20s and he began to compromise, get away from the Lord. He became blinded. He became hardened. And the 20s turned into 30s and the 30s turned into 40s. When I left Greenville, Debbie and I, he was in his 50s and he was hard as concrete. He was exposed to time. And the longer you're exposed, along your, uh, as long as you're running from God and not to God, running away from the voice of reason to the people that love you the most, care about you the most, listen, time is going to harden and blind you. And the longer you're in it, the more difficult it will be to get out of it. So today, if God is speaking to you, do not walk out of this auditorium. I beg you in Jesus' name, don't. You expose yourself to time, but also you expose yourself to the enemy. The Bible says that the enemy, the devil, Satan, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. He wants to devour you, and he's looking for an inroad into your life. And when you and I begin to compromise, begin to do things we know better than to do, go places we know we shouldn't go, hang with people we shouldn't do, get away from church, get away from the things of God, you've given the enemy an inroad into your life. And he will not stop till he steals, kills, and destroys everything you have. He'll destroy you. He'll destroy your marriage. He'll destroy your family. He'll destroy everything you care about. You know why? Because you let him in. You gave him access. Maybe you didn't mean it, but you did. And I'm telling you, this morning you have. And he's not going to stop. Don't give him that access. Don't. We hope you were encouraged by both the worship music and today's message. If you have any questions about your faith or would like to speak to our pastoral staff, we would love to hear from you. You may call the church office at 601-829-1004 or contact us on our website at fbcfannin.org. 